which is not God is all knowing and we are not all knowing so that is yeah. totally yeah. different all right. okay, okay can we go back to the beginning when no. you start no no a, a pass there now yeah the yeah middle, but middle after, is done. you said when i asked middle you a question about that you said no 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 i have to go on uh -huh. all of the stories yeah. information and narration that you've given you go back? what is the objective evidence when we look at these stories that they actually come from God. How can one be sure that this is from God and not from just like any other people writing about it? The Egyptians wrote about God of the underworld, God of the overworld. In the Eastern religions, they talk about many gods. God incarnates into a demigods and semi-gods and so on, right? So, because you don't believe in any of, one of them, there's a reason why you don't believe in them. There is, you have made some particular methodology methodology criteria to establish which is indeed a revelation from God so when we read a book which says you know what God is so afraid because man is speaking one language and and they came together in the land of Shinar in the east and they're building tall sky, skyscrapers and God is says you know what man is doing that let us go down and scatter them and confuse them God becomes so scared because he says. No, he wasn't scared. He says. He was not can scared. Can I finish? Don't can use I finish? that word. Don't use that word. God is so <laughs> concerned. He says, it will be nothing impossible for them to do what they imagine to do. Why are you pushing me? You see what? Madam, why are you pushing me? He wants to take over the conversation. No. I will not. I want to talk about. Okay. Why do we believe in such a book? MJ. Which talks about. Why do we believe in such a book? Why do you believe in such a book which describes God, no, someone no. who is very concerned that man will do everything that they imagine to do? He says nothing will be impossible for them to do That's whatever right. they want to do. That's right. In the belief at that time, they believed if you build tall skyscrapers, oh, you can ascend to the sky and you can overthrow God. Yeah. Why and do even, you believe in this book? And even says in the, when they, in the garden, if, if they eat a tree, they will become in. Yeah, yeah. So as you realize again, once again, every time we speak with a Christian individual, every time when you confront them with logical, reasonable critique of their faith, of their belief, of their description of God, of their description of their guidance or jurisprudence, when they have no answer, because they know that this doesn't make sense, how can God be so concerned and says nothing will be impossible for them to do that they will overthrow God? And he comes down and he confuses them. And that's why you have people speaking in different languages. In contrast, what does Allah say in the Quran right, about... He, he get, what does Allah your, say in the Quran about people speaking different languages? He, he says this answer? is one of the signs. Yeah, we are, we, I know we have, one of the signs of Allah is that he gave us in different languages, made us in different tribes, so that we recognize each other. But in the Bible, it's the opposite. God confused people. That's why they speak different languages. Because if they spoke the same language and if they were together in one place, they will do something that God is so concerned about. Nothing will be impossible for them to do. According to the Eastern mythology, we know we have texts older than the Bible, which they believe that you can build tall skyscrapers, go up in heaven, and you can overthrow God. This is a reminiscent that we find in the Genesis account in which it describes by a human being who's writing it that God can be overthrown by people human beings who speak the same language and who are united and building towards Christ capers. That is why I would say this particular information in Genesis in the Hebrew Bible in the Christian and Jewish text is not something that you can accept to be divine just like another example about the Noah's flood do you know why there's a rainbow in the sky? Madam, do you know why there's a rainbow in the sky sometimes? The rainbow is placed as a sign of a covenant that whenever God is about to destroy mankind, the biblical God, about to destroy mankind again through his anger, when God looks at the rainbow, it will remind him. No, God don't need to remind her. He doesn't need to remind her. That's what it her. says. No, he never said that. Oh, do you have a Bible? Never said that. On the phone. On not the phone. Re not remind God. Right. Remind I would like us. to now show you. Remind us. That will us. be sensible, right? Us. That will be sensible. Us, yes. But what if, madam, you find that this reminder is only not for, is not for us, it's but for, for God? Why does he need reminding? Exactly. I agree with you. Let's read the Bible.
Yeah, here. Yeah. He's talking to you, right? No, I'm talking to you, Adam. No, no, Look no, here. NG, NG. Here, here. Come on, mother, be fair. Talk with him. Okay. okay. No, here, here. Carry on. And God says, and God says, no, I'm reading the Bible for you, so at least you know what is going on here. <laughs> and this is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. And for all future generations, I have set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, every living creature of all f flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it. And remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God will remember. So the lady agreed with us. Why would God need reminding? But this is precisely what the Bible says. I wish that God opens our heart to understand this passage, which she agrees wholeheartedly that this is not what God is. God doesn't need reminding. So I hope she comes back again or in the future discussion that we have, you know, she appreciates that, that this indeed is not a true, accurate, correct description of God. In fact, this is a reflection of how humans portray God in this deficient manner. I hope all of you can see that and appreciate how Islam describes God. Islam says, God does not take even slumber or sleep. Nothing touches him. And the Bible said God rested. So the idea that God is deficient, all of this Quran tells you the correct description of God in which no, God is Al Ghani. He is free from all these deficiencies people ascribe. Subhanallah, Amma Yasifun, Aqulu Qawli Hadha, Astaghfirullah wa lakum. What is going there?